Yes. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install reinforcing mesh for concrete. Okay. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate it. Don't forget to click the bell. Okay. Notifications for all our latest videos. And then stay for the duration. Drop us a comment. All right. Let us know. I'll get back to you. Anything else you want us to see, anything to cover, let us know. Give us your feedback. If you found this any, any help towards you, okay, let us know. We'd love your feedback. Take care. Enjoy. So you might be wondering what reinforced meshing is and what the uses are for. Okay, so I'm going to give you that information right now. So you can get 6 mil, 7 mil, 8 mil, 10 mil, and so forth. And that is the thickness of the reinforced bar, which is metal. And you see it crisscross across. Okay, that's the size of the thickness. And the purposes for that are, so as you saw, we've reinforced this whole area, okay? The main thing is, if anything drops, worst case scenario, just say something starts dropping, you're gonna have a massive crack there, that's gonna start going, that's gonna start staying. But with the reinforced meshing, it's basically one massive reinforced pad. So it gives it, gives it that extra um, strength and integrity. So the tools you're going to need to do this job are going to be a grinder, okay? A four inch grinder with a metal cutting blade to cut the reinforced mesh. So you're going to need to cut the reinforced mesh to suit the size and the aperture all the way around, obviously whatever you're doing, okay? So if you're laying on the floor, you need to cut around the building and stuff. You use your four inch grinder with a metal cutting blade to suit. And then you're also going to need some spaces underneath, okay? So they come in plastic or little concrete ones, anything like that. Um, and that basically lifts the reinforced mesh off the floor, roughly like that distance, okay? And that allows the concrete to go underneath it and on top of it, so the reinforced, reinforced mesh is in the middle of the concrete pad, okay? You're gonna need, need um, some ties as well. So ties, so when you're overlapping reinforced mesh, you need to tie them together. So you don't wanna be start working through it and then one of the layers are lifting up Okay, because it's also dangerous as well while you're trying to work on there. So that's, you're going to need to tie them all down, make sure it's all secure all right through, so it's one reinforced mesh. And then you're going to need nothing else. Nice and simple that is, isn't it? So, you know, anyone can do that. You don't need, you don't need masses of tools. You don't need to be a, a full construction or a builder, a uh, construction company or anything like that. You know I mean? Just a DIY can do that. You, grinder just to cut that tape measure obviously i forgot the most important so tape measure obviously to measure the distances required transfer these measurements to the reinforced mesh we like to use a marker pen and you can see them nice and clear and cut them through but when you're cutting them it's the case when you cut the reinforced mesh make sure you use safety goggles not only just from the sparks from cutting metal the blade on the grinder, the metal cutting blade, okay, because they're flimsy, they're really thin, they snap off, they're very dangerous, they can come through and cut, cut through your face and just stick in your face sometimes. You see some of these horror stories. So do that, okay, and ear defenders because it's loud, gloves because it's sharp when you cut them, okay. Make sure you have all those tools and you're ready to do the job and ready to start the next stage. The mesh down ready to go. Concrete's coming in a second. It's been tied up 
spaced up, ready to go. Should I get the concrete chute in place now? As you see, it goes right out. So we're going to chuck that in. Lovely jubbly. So as you can see, these little blocks, okay, they're little spaces that raise up the reinforced mesh off the floor. Okay, so in the previous video I say, I explain, we've got a 1200 gauge DPM inside, and that is to prevent the moisture coming from the ground up through the floor. Okay, so now the concrete's gonna go all through this, and then we have to put a 100 mil insulation and then a 75 mil screed across to finish the floor off. Woo! Look at this baby, right down that. So we've already done the drainage all through here. So we put renewed the uh, main foul pipe for upstairs, goes underneath the floor, a new sweep and bend, out to the stack you can see here, which is for the new disabled toilet. And then it goes through out to the uh, manhole outside, which we renewed the whole pipe for. We've put this timber uh, uh, along the outside edge here. So we know we get the concrete to the underside of it, and then we can level back through just to make it a little bit quicker so because it's not going to be finished floor we've got concrete um we've got Celotex PIR insulation to go on top of the on top of this concrete and then we've got to screed 75 millimeters on top of that then so to start with this has been a little bit delay on this because the driver didn't have it wet enough to start with so it's tacking straight to the bloody um DPM that we had so I think now it's all sorted and once it's once it's sort of the right consistency it's, it's banging this will be done in 10 minutes. Like we showed you with the, um, the footings we've done on this, on this extension. We've cleared the last, we've cleared the last shit out of the chute. And now it's going to be wet enough just to find its own consistency all the way down. It's going to flow. Flow rider. Oh, there you go, lovely. Thirty-five minutes, job done. So it's literally take me five minutes to shift this corner because it's there. Um, so we're just gonna move the shoot out of the way now. So I finish this corner, job done. Half past eight, floor is done, ready to go, and I can go back to the office. Boys gonna carry on inside in a minute. Finish off some fireboard. Or do finish off the first layer in the reception area and then they're going to do the second layer then so everywhere is double boarded then on the ceilings existing ceilings uh, so we've got the hour fire break and then i, th I think they're going to start putting some timbers inside the steels then start fireboarding all the steels up as well then always do that just in case of a fire emergency